Hey, this is Johnny Jet, and this is my 39 travel questions. And today we have my friend Michaela Malazzi from Stanford, Connecticut. To yes, in the house. Are you in Stanford right now? I'm not. I'm not going to tell you where I am right now, but I'm not in Stanford. I wish I was. I okay. wish I was because my family's there and I miss them so much. And, and where do you live normally? New York City? Yeah, I split my time between New York and Nashville because my husband's a, a touring and uh, professional musician. So we're kind of like, we're this crazy couple that kind of lives these insane lives. But you know how it is, you and Natalie. We Toronto and LA. Five and... or eight years we commuted, Toronto, LA. Yeah, yeah. So you are the host and executive producer yes. of... Bare Do you feet, want me to say it? Bare feet with Michaela <laughs> Malazzi. Yeah, that's me. Uh, it's been going on for four years on PBS? It's four years on PBS. And two years before that, we started on a local public television station in New York City, NYC Life. And they're our main channel. Um, they've been airing us six years now, which is incredible. And it started as a blog 10 years ago. It's been 10 years now. I think that's when I first met you, Johnny, was like way back in the day. <laughs> probably one of the tea bags. yeah and i was like let me get this straight this girl travels around the world and dances i mean that's yeah. pretty awesome you get paid to dance around the world yeah I, I think i really do have the best job in the world i mean it's a lot of work right you know traveling isn't vacation um but it is i think the best job i get to meet some incredible people dress in these elaborate and gorgeous costumes, learn these dances, learn some instruments, learn some rhythms, eat amazing food. I mean, I don't think it gets better than that, honestly. Well, and you have Emmys behind you. Yeah. <laughs> How many Emmys you won? Have you won I kind of had to, I kind of had to sit here. I've won four, three are here. One are, is with my family. I gave it to them as like a thank you to them because they've always supported me and everything I've done since I was a kid, all the dance lessons and music lessons. And then I have next to them are a bunch of telly awards that I just won two more today. Like literally today, just found out we won two more. That so congratulations. What a, thank you. What a good time for me to uh, be <laughs> interviewing you instead of uh, you losing. <laughs> yeah, that would, I just wouldn't have brought it up. I would have been like, these, these old guys, these old gals right here, um, they're my friends. <laughs> so, and by the way, is there a, a, a reception for these like Emmy, daytime Emmy Awards? Is it daytime? Is it daytime, right? These, well, these were actually New York Emmys. Okay. Um, and so the, day, the daytimes this year, I, was, I wasn't nominated this year, unfortunately. Um, oh, sorry, you know what? That's I'm okay. Gonna, I'm just going to walk away right now. But no, but um, this year, I think everything's had to go virtual anyway. So if it's a year not to be nominated, this year's the year because you can't walk the red carpet. Uh, so I don't feel so bad, but I mean, it stings a little. Why not? Uh, you listen, know? I had Corey Lee on as a guest uh, a few episodes ago. I love ago, Corey. And he actually recommended you. He sa I said, asked him one of the questions was, who are your favorite travel bloggers or TV shows? He mentioned you. And he, same thing. He won the uh webbies last year but this year he was nominated yeah. didn't win i said listen if you're not gonna win this year this is a year not to win right it is i mean well yeah for so many reasons it's just what a wonky year yeah so what a wonky year did you go to college i did i went to nyu went to new york university for music mm -hmm. composition and i minored in italian yeah. so where are you where are your parents from uh, both my parents are from this from this little town called Minturno. It's not far from Ischia, actually. So we've been connected, Johnny, like for generations. I think there's some some weird connection that we have. First Stanford, Connecticut, and then and then uh, Ischia. But we're not. We can on a clear day we can see Ischia from my grandmother's house. That's amazing. And have you been to Ischia? On a very very clear day. Um, I think I have when I was a kid. Well, to be you honest, need we to went as back. little little kids. I know. You need to start dancing I over know. there. <laughs> Have you seen um, what's that series on HBO? My brilliant friend. Have you seen that series? No. Oh my gosh! They go to Iskia for the summer. Um, you should totally. What's it just called? Just like a, my brilliant friend. It's in Italian. They actually are speaking 
the dialect that my family pretty much grew up with. So my family loves watching it because they're just like, oh my God, it reminds us of home. And it's kind of cool. I'm going to tell one of my good buddies, or my best friend, yeah. he's fluent in Italian. I barely speak English, as you can tell. So, um, <laughs> you know, when I go to Italy, it's like, do you speak Italian? I'm like, un poco. I mean, I, I can't even say, I, I, you know. That was it. That was good. Pizza, spaghetti. That's yeah. all you need to say. Lasagna. <laughs> oh, molto bella. Uh, my dad's first language is Italian, but they never really talked. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So how many countries have you been to, do you think? Uh, not as many as people think. I think around 35, which is a lot. I think it's a lot for me. Um, but it's, you know, I don't, what I love about what I do is we go there and, or when I go to a place, I really feel super immersed because I just jump right in with the locals. And that's what Bare Feet's been wonderful is that, I was traveling this before the TV show and I use dance and music to connect with people um, using it as a universal language when I can't speak the local language because I, the only other language I speak other than English is Italian. So dance is this universal language where I was able to kind of dig right in. So um, I love to go back to places that I've been to too. It's of course, there's like so much of the world to see, but uh, yeah, 30, so many, 35, how, I think. 35 and how many continents? Uh, what is it? Five. I haven't been to Australia or Antarctica, and not to Antarctica. Uh, like a lot of my guests, same thing for them. But you, you, at least you yeah. got to go to Australia first of all. That's, a, that's I know. A well, Australia is on the list for season four, which is now on hold because of COVID. But we're hoping to get there once we're able to travel and start filming again. All right. Well, I hope um, I hope you get there. I hope we all get to go. You know. <laughs> I know. I know. You never know. Um, what's your earliest travel memory? My earliest travel memory. So I have like two versions of a travel memory. My first is my mom used to be a, um, a travel agent, like a part-time travel agent when we were kids. And I used to, she would take me to work. Like she was a, a real estate agent and a travel agent. So I was always like her little sidekick and everything. And I remember being under her desk at her travel agency flipping through these magazines of just seeing these airplanes and like Italy was always the, you know, brochures for Italy left and right in the eighties, you know, and I just fell in love with those images and like, I want to go on a plane. So I remember that very vividly and like my mom's legs sitting next to my mom's legs under her desk. And then the other real travel memory is I was lucky, you know, my grandparents were still in Italy when I was growing up. So we would every Sunday get on the phone and talk to my grandparents in Italian and kind of have the same conversation as a little kid every Sunday. But um, we would go, cause we were a blue collar family, so we couldn't afford to go every year, but we would go maybe once every four or five years. And the first time I went, I was two. And I remember crying hysterically cause there was this big um, stairwell. I think we went to Naples like as a family, like a trip to go for the day. And it was like, I was, I don't know. I, I just remember crying and it was hot and crazy. And like, that was one of the first travel memories of my family. Just being like, chill out. <laughs> What's going on? But yeah, it was, I mean, Italy to me is this, um, it is my grandmother's house, us killing chickens in the back and killing rabbits and farming. And that's what travel is for me is it's like, it's working, it's living. So it's kind of reflected into how I, I travel through dance. It's like, it's my job. I love it. I love to, to, to be productive, not just like sit on a beach. I, I get crazy if I kind of sit on a beach. Yeah. I don't like sitting on a beach either, but and yeah. when I'd go to my relative's house or my grandfather's house and they have rabbits Fortunately, I never saw them kill them, but, oh. and they used to tell me it was chicken. I'm like, um, it's chicken cacciatore. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Rabbit's and, the best. Rabbit's the best. Yeah, then my brother would be like, uh, it's a rabbit. <laughs> my, my, we have a picture from me when I was two wearing like short pants and my grandmother had just butchered a chicken and it's like splayed open. I'm like looking at it, you know, because you, you grow up seeing what you're eating. I think it's really important to understand that too, the process of, of food, where it comes from. So it's true. I'm grateful for that. It's a, I think it's a unique experience, but I'm really grateful for that. And speaking of food, do you eat rabbit still? Oh yeah. Rabbit. Oh my gosh. I eat everything. My favorite food is tripe. Um, my mom's tripe, which is like Cow stomach, for anybody who doesn't know, it's cow stomach. And my mother, my grandmother's, it's my grandmother's recipe. It might be my great-grandmother's recipe, but it's like 
red sauce with tripe and bay leaves and potatoes. It's a stew and it's like, it's my favorite dish from home. <laughs> that is not mine. Yeah. <laughs> I so love it. What is the craziest thing you've ever eaten? I mean, you're already, you already won the award, I can tell you. Well, uh, I've eaten um, bugs in South Korea, which I will never, I can't stomach bugs. And I did it because the camera was on and I, it was like in the market and it was dried and it didn't look too much like a bug. It was like a, a squished, um, I think it was, I forget what they're called, but it wasn't great. And I was trying to be as respectful as possible, but it tasted like dirt basically. Um, but I'm just not a bug person. I, I almost, not almost, but in Malaysia, there are sago worms. Have you seen the sago worms? They're like, fat they're like the size of your thumb okay and it's um white it looks like a maggot kind of and it has pinchers and this wonderful woman um is not me she's like has one alive in her hand she's like eat it and kill it tastes like peanut butter and i was like i don't want to be disrespectful because i know this is delicious for you and it's a great source of protein but i cannot i cannot do it <laughs> alive like it was alive i couldn't do it yeah i've I eaten grub worms before um, that's i think that's what it yeah, those, yeah i think that's a grub worm but yeah the guy we were in new zealand hiking he said do you want to eat it raw or do you want me to cook it and i was like we're hiking the guy just busted out a saute pan started sauteing it a frying pan and start, I was wow like, i, was like, I like think chicken. i might have i think i <laughs> everything tastes like chicken i might have tried it if it was cooked but it was she literally said rip off the pinchers and stick it in your mouth and i was like i can't i just can't i can't and, and living in new york you know roaches no matter how clean your apartment is or walking down the street you're gonna see cockroaches like this big yep. so if anything remotely close to a, a new york cockroach or its family i'm like i can't just thinking about it gives me i can't okay moving on next okay. question <laughs> these questions were for later down the road but i was like okay let's, get them out. let's just get them out of the way because, why not why not um so what's your favorite american city oh obviously new york um besides new york. i have two besides new york and i did a whole season of bare feet in new york city our second season i get to travel the world within the five boroughs of new york city so awesome. new york is my heart it's my love but my second at close second is new orleans mm -hmm. oh man the music there the food there the culture there the people there it's new orleans is just like it's like no other american city you don't feel like you're in the united states there almost it's just so unique and I love it. It's the sounds of it, the rhythms of it. It's, I could go there all the time. And I don't even like going during Mardi Gras. I love going like any other time except right. for Mardi Gras. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of Bourbon Street. Yeah. Well, you don't have to go to Bourbon Street. That's the thing. Like the Bourbon, the New, or the New Orleans that you see on Bourbon Street is not right. the rest of the magical New Orleans it's that there is. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. How about uh, internationally? Yeah. What's your favorite city? Um, I would say Buenos Aires. I've been there three times now. There's something about tango is like, it's infectious. It's intoxicating. I, I've met people there that are American that have like, they're expats that they went there for a week to learn tango and then never went back. Wow. You know, they never went back home. They just fell in love with it. And the people are incredible. It's very bohemian. Um, I have so many... Yes. Yeah. And there's, I've been there like in multiple stages of my travel life. Like I went, we stayed at a hostel with a bunch of friends back in 2006, I think it was. And then going back to film an episode for Bare Feet in 2012. And then going back in 2016 to bring a, a group of Bare Feet dancers with me. So I love Buenos Aires. It's one of my favorites. You know, I've only been once, but I loved it. And, right? Um, yeah. Great city. How about, uh, what's your favorite U.S. airport? My favorite U.S. airport. Ah. LaGuardia. Ah. I'm kidding. I, no, you know what I'm, I, I have to say, I have to go through LaGuardia a lot and I've seen the chain, the transformation that the airport is going through. And I'm really going to be excited for what LaGuardia is going to be in the next five years because the new terminal is gorgeous. You've been through it, I'm assuming. Yes, of course. I yeah, I, actually, I like LaGuardia because it's so close to the city. You, you know, yeah, you I know. Jump I know on the it, bus. Yeah, and and look, thank you to Biden for telling it like it was because it was the most terrible airport in the right. United States, and it the transformation that is happening. I have to go to LaGuardia outside of the COVID era, maybe like four times a month, 
And so every time I would go back once a week, you know, I would see like this new wing and this, and I'm like, yes, this is the airport we need. So yes, I'm, I'm excited about LaGuardia. I know that's like a controversial answer, but. No, someone else, someone else recently said the same thing. So I, I, I'm excited for it. All right. How about internationally? Uh, I like, I really like the Istanbul airport. Um, because it's like the center of the world almost. It really feels like the center of the world. It's a jumping off point for so many. And it, it, there's so many different people that you see there and so many different foods and so many, I, I don't know, there's something about Istanbul and being in that airport um, that, you know, the, Europe, I feel like Frankfurt's the center of Europe, but like Istanbul, you can go to the Middle East, you can go to Russia, you can go to Europe, you can go to Africa from there. It really feels like this focal point. Yeah. As, a, as an airport. They actually flew to the most destinations worldwide before COVID. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you uh, really feel it in the airport too because you see so many different people from different parts of the world, more so than I think in other international uh, airports. And do you have a favorite airline? I, well, internationally, I'm the type of person that tries to book the cheapest, right? Because I'm the producer. I got to write the checks for everything <laughs> on my show. <laughs> Um, so I always try to find a, a cheap flight. Um, domestically, I am like a diehard Southwest fan. Um, you know, two free check bags, no change fees. I am constantly changing my itineraries because let's say I'm doing a speaking engagement somewhere. As long as Southwest flies there, it's like my go-to airline. The point system's really great. Um, I love Southwest. I'm like a huge diehard Southwest awesome. fan. And because your mother was a travel agent, or is she still? She isn't. It was a very small, um, she, she, it's so funny now that when she introduces people or she meets people and they find out that I'm her daughter, she's like, Michaela's living the dream that I've always wanted to travel, you know? And, um, because of our family situation, she wasn't able to take as many trips, uh, to, uh, as like fam trips as she could have. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was a little difficult for her to travel, but yeah, she just loves, so, I mean, I've taken her on a few trips. Have you picked it up? I mean, I, you say you book your own flights. So do you love booking your own? I love travel? the planning. I love the planning. I love organizing. I mean, for a crew, I, I do all of that work and I just, I just love the organization of it. I love like the, the spreadsheets and the, you know, the timelines and the itineraries. I love all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's stressful but it's a part of the job that I actually embrace. And then like when my husband and I are trying to do a trip, even just for work, like I love the planning of it. He's like, chill out. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not the planner that does like, okay, at 9 a.m. we do this. It's, right. you know, at 9.30 we do this. It's more of like, let's get the hotels, um, the flights, yep. the ground transportation all figured out, some things that might be happening, and then we'll leave it open. But I love the like organization of everything. Um, I'm with you. <laughs> it's the type A in me that just loves that. <laughs> Probably. Is there a certain type of plane that you like better? Are you an aviation geek? No, 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 I'm not. I, if I'm lucky enough to fly, fly business class when I am able to, like if I can lie down and sleep, that's the best. I can sleep on a plane pretty easily. So, but that's very rare for me. I know you're always in business class or first class. Not always, so. <laughs> but I but try. Quite a lot. Yeah, I try. quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I've learned a lot of tricks on how to get upgraded. Yeah. Uh, how about have you ever sat next to any famous celebrities? Uh, I don't know if you know this about me. I used to work in the music industry before I had this whole dance uh, mm -hmm. career. And I used to um, work in metal in management, which is like, it's like another life that I had. And you so seen, I worked, yeah, like metal music, like metal. Heavy, heavy metal. Yeah. So I was on the management team for Slipknot. Um, and like I used to fly for concerts, like download festivals. So I would party with like Korn, the band or, you know, like Iron Maiden and, and the Slipknot guys and all these amazing, amazing bands. So I got to travel with people and yeah, it was, awesome. it was, it was fun and crazy and like a, a past life. It just feels like a whole other life. Now, did you ever get to go on the Iron Maiden plane? Because one of their I didn't. Band is I know. I know. I did not. That I did not get to do. So I, I kind of want to cross that off my bucket list because I, I actually do like Iron Maiden. I'm not a usual, um, like I'm not a metalhead, but I, I love Iron Maiden. Actually, they're kind of amazing. Yeah, 
I, I'm not a, um, <laughs> I'm not a metal guy. The energy but, of the show is you can't you can't ignore it. It's just like this is insane. The amount of people and like the frenzy of it and the the like the I don't know. There's something about the power. It's really powerful to to experience that. It's okay. not something I would do every day, but it's definitely pretty cool. Okay. How about hotels? What's your favorite hotel? Favorite hotel. Um, I, uh, there's, I like the smaller ones, not the huge, big, fancy. Cause I don't normally, you know, unless we're being hosted by someone and even then we don't really care too much about the hotel, but there is the, um, the dub, uh, number 31 in Dublin, okay. uh, is this beautiful Georgian home that was refinished to be this like bed and breakfast. It's amazing. And it was voted the best uh, Irish breakfast in all of Dublin. And it's, it was, it used to be owned by this husband and wife. And I think they sold it to a bigger company now, but that's one of my favorite hotels. Um, and speaking of Ireland, there's also the great Southern, which is kind of like a little treat. It's one of the oldest hotels in Ireland. I think, um, it's in Killarney and it's beautiful. This like gorgeous estate. Um, it's right by the train station and it's wonderful. You just get the, the sort of royal treatment there and have high tea and oh, it's, just, it's just awesome. Were you at the tea bags in Ireland? I was. I didn't get to stay at the Great Southern, but I, had, I went and had um, high tea there. And then right before COVID, a girlfriend of mine and I wanted to take a quick trip to Ireland. Good, thank goodness we did because God knows when we're going to be able to travel again. But I said, look, there's this hotel that I went to have high tea at and I never got to stay there and it was off season so we got a great deal and it was just wonderful it was like so decadent and beautiful and lush and it was really really gorgeous that's awesome did you stay there did you no you probably, I, I, oh. I didn't stay there when we were there we, we stayed at, the last time i was in ireland we stayed at the kilkea castle and then the host hotel for the convention when we were down by near killarney yeah yeah i love um, Killarney. how so much. about best hotel view Best hotel view. Hmm. I would have to say, oh my goodness, how could I how could I forget? I we were in Aitutaki for a shoot. We were all we were supposed to fly in like two days before, so spend two days in Aitutaki in um, Island? the Cook Islands. In the Cook yeah. Islands. Yeah. Um, but we only were able to stay one day because of the shoot schedule, which was fine. But our, we, ha we stayed in the Pacific Resort in Aitutaki, and that was the most luxurious place I've probably ever stayed in my life. There you go. Very nice. Um, the view, you had like a private beach. I mean, I could never afford as just like a normal human being going and staying at that place. Um, but it was really such a special treat. And it was an incredible view. And then there's like a jungle that you walk in. Everyone has like these little cabanas and Oh, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I took that picture, by the way, that just... Did you really? Was yeah, that and that's there? the only picture I have, by the way, as a virtual backdrop on my computer. So <laughs> It's the best one. Why else would you need anything yeah, else? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, cook, the cooks are amazing. Oh, I love the Cook Islands. The people um, there. We did a whole episode in Rarotonga and part of Aitutaki, and it was just like so special. So special because a lot of uh, the, cook, the cookies, you know, the people that are local... They're like, nobody ever comes here and features this part of our culture. They always want to go to the beach. And we featured uh, Ura dance. We, we featured a, a dance competition that isn't a tourist attraction. It's just for the locals. And they were really excited to have us there. And I was really honored that they let me film it. So yeah. I and love if, the Cook Islands. And if anyone does go to the Cooks, make sure you sign up for the Progressive Dinner. That was a, one of the best food tours I've ever had in my life. It takes about five hours. They pick you up. Um, from your hotel and then they take you to someone's house for appetizers oh my gosh and then they pick you up and they take you to someone's house another person's house for dinner and then they take you to another one's house for dessert and so you're just experiencing the local stuff you're going around their gardens and you're just learning about their life and you're eating homemade food it's just amazing to her that is awesome that is awesome and Rovatanga is just one circle so you could literally i'm sure just like drive the circle around and you're and you're <laughs> from yeah. one house to the other to the other to the other yeah oh i love it it's that's awesome. so cool what's that called what's the name of that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a progressive dinner or dinner tour it's been a while it's probably been at least 10 years but um i loved it <laughs> that's so, amazing 
speaking of the quarantine, I mean, what will it take you to get back on a plane and how you do, how are you doing with the quarantine? Yeah. Um, what will it take? It'll take that it's like safe, you know, it's not safe to travel yet. So, um, so you wouldn't fly tomorrow. No, unless I absolutely, absolutely had to. And I think if we had to get anywhere, we would probably get in a car and drive for a day or two. Um, I, I'm not planning to travel until I know that it's not only, you know, I'm relatively healthy and relatively young, not that young, but um, it's, I want to be able to see my family again. Right. I really miss my family. And if I don't want to put anyone in danger. So if I do fly or have to go see my parents, like I would have to quarantine, I think for two weeks in their basement and then go see that. So, you know, that's, that's the reality of it. Um, right. So I, I don't know. And, and for me to start filming again, you know, we feature festivals and holidays and people dancing and that's not going to happen for quite a while. So things are on hold for yeah. an indefinite period that I'm just going to wait for, you know, crazy time. Yeah. Um, is there a certain credit card that you use to charge all your travel? Yeah, I love the Amex Business Platinum card. Okay. Um, that is my card. I started my business on the gold card and then eventually upgraded because I travel so much, like the access to the lounges. This is not a paid, paid I advertisement. Understand. Saying. Yeah, um, but I, the lounges I was using when pre-COVID is they had um, a free membership to WeWork for a year. I mean, like, I used all of their benefits to the maximum and it was just like the most wonderful travel companion. And even if there weren't Centurion lounges, then, you know, there's the, what is that called? The pass, the lounge yeah, pass, priority, priority pass. pass. Yeah. So it was like me and my crew, we could have, you know, we're flying, we could go to the priority pass and have a couple hours to chill because yeah. we're just like burning, uh, the candle on both ends. It's, it's where we work really hard. And do you have a favorite airport lounge? Um, any lounge that's available <laughs> that has room that I, I really love the American Express Centurion lounges. I really do. They're like fantastic. Yeah, the um, food is great. The food is really good. The they're food is just really too good. crowded. Although they're, they're, they're fixing that or they work. Yeah. Fixing. And a lot of, I mean, most lounges are crowded now. So it's, that's what I mean. If there's space, I love in Istanbul, the, um, the Turkish airlines lounge is unbelievable. There's right. like one whole section just for, for what is it? Baklava. There's like a baklava table, you know, and you can do like spa, all this stuff. So it's pretty amazing. Awesome. Yeah. How about, how about your favorite Island? Is it the cooks or Ishkia? My favorite Eh, well, you see, I can't remember enough. Um, I mean, Ireland is technically an island, right? Yep, for sure. Yeah. So Ireland is one of my favorite places in the world. Um, I also love uh, Guadalupe Islands. Oh, man. It's, the Caribbean, and it's so funny. I love going to the Caribbean, but I never go to the beach at the Caribbean. I'm always dancing. I'm going to their carnival celebrations. I'm, I'm, you'll never find me at the beach. And it's, you know, if we have like three or four days filming, I'm always like, okay, I'll spend one day at the beach and I never get to the beach. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'm okay uh, with it. And so are you adventurous when you travel and what's the most adventurous activity you've ever done? And which destination do you think is the most, is the best for adventure travel? Well, I'm not the most adventurous, but I've done zip lining in Puerto Rico at Orocovis, which okay. was just beautiful because you're in the jungle and it's, it's just being in nature. I think it was more about being in nature versus the, the adventure side of it. Um, I would assume, because I've never been, but I would assume like New Zealand would probably be an, an amazing adventure destination, South Africa. Um, but I don't ever seek out like, I'm going to go windsurfing or kite surfing. That's not my thing. You gotcha. know, it's, I'm not good at, I'm not a very great swimmer. I can swim, but I get a thrill from uh, the arts, from that connection with people through dance and music. Gotcha. And, you know, yeah. I was talking about the, my progressive dinner tour. Yeah. What was the best tour you ever done or excursion or um, sightseeing hmm. adventure? Yeah. Best tour. Have I'm you sure done a safari? There's... No, I haven't done a safari yet. But you know what? Um, my mother and I, for her 60th birthday, she always wanted to do carnival in Venice. And I had always wanted to do carnival in Venice. 
And so we did it. We stayed in Canarejo in the, in the, um, one of the quarters, one of the neighborhoods. And we, I mean, we, we splurged, but it wasn't crazy. It wasn't like we're spending thousands and thousands. It was like, okay, we're, we're going to do it smart. And we found this must have been, God, like 15 years ago. No, my mom turned 50. I'm sorry, not 60. My mom turned 50. So it was like 15 years ago. And we bought tickets to a ball, like a grand masquerade ball. And it was held in Cazanardi. I don't even know if they hold the balls there, but it was in a, ca means house of, casa. And it was a, a palace. And everyone there, we got dressed up in like 18th century gowns. We had the wigs. There was like um, music. There was dancing. There was comedy. But it was this extravagant experience of feeling like you're back in the time of... Um, Casanova. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And we're walking in the streets of Venice and it's just people in these beautiful costumes. That I think is, is something I'll never forget. And, and we booked it directly, but Cazanardi had this incredible experience of a ball. So yeah, I think that, that, that was it. <laughs> have you ever thought about um, teaching Italian over Zoom? Because you have such an incredible oh, voice and your pronunciation. Grazie. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Maybe simple Italian because I, I do speak Italian fluently, but I do screw up every once in a while. Um, yeah, I could t start. We could do some Johnny Jet Michela. Yeah. Italian lessons. Yeah. The basics. I could be your first customer. Yeah, let's do it. I'd be happy to. Okay. How about, is there any movies that inspired your travels? Oh, yeah. Oh, this goes back to... There's this really cheesy movie with Marissa Tomei and Robert Downey Jr. called Only You. Have you ever seen it? It's yeah, from the 90s. It takes place on the Mulfi Coast. Oh my gosh. It was, she, it's ridiculous. And I saw it when I was like 13 and I wore the VHS tape out <laughs> for many reasons because it's like this love story, but they fly, they start in Venice, then they go to Rome, and then they go to Positano. And if I, like my husband saw it recently because I forced him to watch it. He's like, this explains so much about you. It's like, I believe in destiny and the, all the, the love of um, all those places that Marissa Tomei goes to. And what's so funny on that trip with my mom to Venice, you know, they go to this place called Hotel Danieli, which is like this old palace. It's by St. Mark's. And my mom and I were like, what if we could get a room in Hotel Danieli just for one night? And we found some crazy deal. It was like a hundred euros. It should have wow. been like 900 euros. And the whole time that we were in the hotel, I'm taking pictures in all the spots that Marissa Tomei went. I was like such a nerd. You know what? I'm going to have to see if my wife's ever seen that movie. Because I've seen it, but it's been, you know, 20, 30, however yeah. long it's come out. Yeah. And my wife it's loves so Robert Downey Jr. It's so cheesy. For everybody watching this, like, don't judge me. I was a, like adolescent, you know, puppy dog <laughs> love kind of, oh, it's the best movie though. But a great travel, like Italy. Right. Great movie. And how about a TV show besides your own travel TV show? Oh yeah. Um, besides my own, which is not my favorite. I mean, it's my favorite to make, but to watch, um, I know I'm a little late in the game, but do you know, um, salt, fat, acid, heat with Samin Nusrat. She's on uh, Netflix. No, it's a food travelogue, but it's so beautifully done. It's super cinematic. Um, and she breaks down food by the categories of salt. And she does that whole episode in Japan of how they harvest salt from the ocean. And then fat is um, Italy. They're harvesting the olives and then making olive oil and then talking about like pig fat. I mean, it's so extensive and gorgeous and lush and she's so lovable. And, and she's like, you just want to like give her a big hug. She's the sweetest thing. And my husband still have to watch, we still have to watch acid and heat. We haven't watched those two, but she's, infectious and the, the storytelling is incredible i think she's wonderful what's her name uh samin s-a-i-s-a-m-i-n nosrat and she has a, a cookbook that's what the show is based on it's called salt fat acid heat gotcha and how yeah, about she's books? great do you read a lot what's your favorite travel book <sighs> my favorite travel book um i i this sounds super like maybe scholarly but i remember in school, we had to read the, the Odyssey. And there was something about that book, like it's, it's rhythm, it's, it's like rhyming, the, the cadence of it and the adventure of it. 
I just fell in love with that book. And I know it's not technically like a travel book, but it's this voyage, just this adventure. I just loved it. I don't know. I really love that book. Wow. I did not read that book. Uh, we obviously <laughs> you should. Went to different high schools <laughs> or middle schools or wh wherever you read it. Um, yeah. How... I, I pick it up every once in a while and reread it because it's just so beautifully done. And now that I'm older, I, I understand, you know, it's like watching a, a, a like a, if you're watching a movie when you're a kid, you don't get half the jokes. And then as older, you, you, you realize, oh, that's what they meant. There's all these double entendres. But when you're older, you have more experience in life. So you realize like the drama and the comedy and the love, everything just makes more sense. I don't know. What's your worst travel moment? My worst travel moment. Uh, we got robbed a couple of times with my family. We were going on, when we were doing our family vacation, we were taking a day trip to Rome. And it was so dumb. We left all this stuff in the car. And my mom's like, let's go to the catacombs for a couple hours and we'll leave everything in the car. And we get back and like the car's jimmied open and oh my they only took my bags. <laughs> Luckily, I mean, as a kid, I was really upset. Um, but my mother's like really nice a Nikon camera was in the car. They didn't find it. It was so bizarre. So These guys are amateurs. Yeah, but luckily, yeah, that, that really was terrible because you feel so violated. And Where was the other um, time you got robbed? Italy again? Italy again. It was in Florence. Same thing. Like, it was, I mean, that's why I never leave anything in the car. I'm so, it's always been like, they'll jack something from the car. And we didn't realize the second time we were robbed because they had just opened the window and again, took only my bag. And then we didn't realize until we got to the hotel, like, hey, where's my little backpack bag and couldn't find it anywhere and it was like oh my god we got robbed again <laughs> so bizarre they just take your bag yeah but look if i gotta take one for the team i guess like you know right good karma for me in the end i got to travel more <laughs> i'm down to like three questions four questions yeah. what's your yeah. most embarrassing travel moment most embarrassing travel moment mm. Hmm. Dancing, your, your clothing I think, malfunction, malfunction. No, nah, uh, did I have a clothing malfunction before? No, you know what? It was. It's not embarrassing, but it was like that might be on the on the border of like not worst moment because it was kind of amazing. Is in the Cook Islands, we met with Captain Moko, okay. who is this fisherman. Yeah, not Captain Hook, Captain Moko, and he took us on his boat at five in the morning to go fishing for uh, uh, yellowfin tuna. And he's like, this is gonna be about a four hour, you know, uh, boat ride. And it's me and my camera person, it's just the two of us. And I get horrible seasickness. And I, I know this, and I told my camera girl, I was like, Bridget, if I get sick, you better get this on camera because this is why we're here. Like, I want you to get everything. And Luckily, within the first 20 minutes, we're like catching a yellowfin tuna, this big fit yellowfin tuna. We get it on the boat, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going to be sick. I was like, Captain Mocha, we got to go back. So we start going back, and I'm throwing up on the side of the boat. And Bridget got it all. filming all of it, and we put it in the episode. And I love sharing that moment with people, not to gross them out, but to be like, this is travel too. Travel's not perfect. Um, but then as soon as we got on, this is why it's not a terrible experience because as soon as we got back to the Island, he's slicing open that fish. It's still warm. It's like still like, um, moving. And then we're having sashimi. We're like eating fresh tuna, literally just caught by us. So it's well, like, and you were able to eat it right after, right after. So good for you. Um, yeah. But it was awful. I felt like I was going to die. Cause it's like, you know, the the cook islands is it's like a lagoon and then once you get out it's just like this right the whole time and i kept thinking to myself if i had to do this for four hours i think i would have i don't yeah. think i would have made it that's why i don't like to sign up for these big tours when there's you know a big public tour when there's other people at least you get a private one you can dictate it say you know what, i'm ready to go back yeah and we were filming so we were able to do that i mean it was this little dingy boat in the middle of the, of the ocean it was like this is insane it was great it was great What's your dream destination? Dream destination. Um, <clears throat> I would love, love, love to dance with the Maori people in New Zealand. That's like top of my list. 
top of my list. Um, I wanted to dance flamenco. I got to do that for this new season. Um, you know, I've done so many things that I've wanted to do, but going to New Zealand and dancing with the Maori people is like a dream, absolute dream. And what's your favorite dance, by the way? That's a hard question to answer. I don't really have a favorite dance. I have a favorite style. Like I love men's dances, Men? you know? Yeah, because if you see women's dances, they're a little bit more like seductive and hips. And I, I don't feel very feminine. I'm more of a like a, I'm like stocky and I love jumps and I love like sharp movements, whether that's like foot movements, tap dancing, clogging or, or anything that's like, like when we were in Morocco doing all this footwork, like I love that kind of stuff. I love stuff that's very rhythmic and um, almost like math for my feet. I love that kind of stuff. But when you, I, you know, I do belly dance and stuff and I, I always feel a little uncomfortable because I just don't feel quite as feminine. But when I get to do these like dances that men get to show off, I'm like, I could do that. You know, like, let me try and I kind of want to prove to everybody that this little girl can kind of hold her own. Can and you it, break it dance? Uh, I've tried it in Uzbekistan, actually. I'm not very good because I... <laughs> you can. <laughs> that was amazing, Johnny. <laughs> you know. That was absolutely, for those of you listening on the, on the podcast, not watching the video, he just did a, a roll, like a shoulder roll through. <laughs> you, know, you know, I got my Michael Jackson moves. That's how I, that's how I impressed there my wife. Go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Two more <laughs> What's the most important thing travel has taught you? What's the most important thing? We're all the same, right? Like we all need love, food, shelter, clothing, warmth, community. And I love to say like, we all need a little bit of dance and music to be happy in the world. Like everybody, every culture I visit, every country I visit, every neighborhood I visit, it's the same thing. We're all exactly, exactly the same. And that's been this beautiful realization um and like the more exotic places that i go the even more similar you, you see all these things it's wonderful I'm right there with you uh, <laughs> my, except the dance part because i'm really not a good dancer as you can probably tell um my last question and before I, you answer this question what's your best travel tip where can people find you you can find me at travelbarefeet.com and actually, all of our episodes are now on Amazon Prime. Season three just launched on Amazon Prime. Um, so you can watch the new season. We're on your local PBS station. You can follow us on all the socials at Travel Bare Feet, but you can find all that information at travelbarefeet.com. Good. And you have a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. If you look up YouTube at Travel Bare Feet, but everything is Bare Feet with Mikhail Malazzi. We're all there. We're everywhere you can find something. We should be there. <laughs> well, I'm going to create a blog post out of this and actually I'll send it over to you so you can put in all your social handles and so Amazing. everyone can find it. So please sign up to my newsletter, johnnyjet.com. Subscribe to this channel, like this video and are you ready? The drum roll, please. <laughs> Michaela, what's your best travel tip? Embrace the chaos. Embrace the chaos. This is like, it's always been this way for me is that you plan and plan and plan and plan. And for us, we're planning our show and planning the shoots. And then inevitably in every single trip we've done, something goes wrong or someone misunderstands something, but, but what happens or something's canceled. Right. But what we've always found is instead of throwing a tantrum or getting annoyed or getting pissed off or getting angry, you embrace it and you, use it and something more amazing always comes out of it. That's always been the case. So embrace the chaos. As long as you feel safe, embrace the chaos. Yeah. Listen, those are great tips. And listen, I appreciate you coming on to my show. Thank you so much. And Thanks for having uh, me. I can't wait to see season four. I can't wait to be able to travel with you again. Thank but you. Me too. Thank you so much for taking your time and um, being on my show. Thanks, Johnny. We'll dance. Next time I see you, we'll be dancing because we'll have plenty to celebrate. That's right. I'll, 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 do, I'll do the worm for you. Yeah. See you later. Bye.